Hi, my name is Sam Cummins and I work for Prime Ammunition. I'm good friends with Josh of Criterion Barrels and uh, when I was looking to do my most recent build of an AR-15, uh, really the only clear choice for me was a Criterion Barrel. And the result is what you see sitting in front of you here. This is my recce rifle. I'm going to take you through it. So I'm going to take you guys end to end of this rifle, starting at the buttstock all the way to the muzzle, uh, tell you about the parts, where they came from, um, my thoughts behind why I put them on the gun. Some of the things were, were like extremely uh, well thought out and other ones were just parts I had good experience with and, and went ahead and used them on the gun. Uh, starting down here, uh, looks like we'll start with the sling. How about that? And I'll take it off so you can see the gun a little bit better. Uh, the sling is the Blue Force Gear uh, Vickers Combat Applications Sling, a VCAS uh, sling with the pad and it's adjustable. I've had this sling for, oh gosh, uh, probably five years or so. My brother took this with him on his, his deployment to Afghanistan in 2010. I loaned it to him and made sure I got it back. Um, but that's been on just about every gun I've had uh, over the past five or six years um, for classes or just keeping around the, the house, the truck, whatever. Um, it's really my go-to sling. I have that one and, an, and another one of the exact same kind but without the pad. Um, no, no preference pad or non. It's just I happened to get that one a couple years ago with the pad and I liked it. So that's the way it was. Uh, I did add a... A tourniquet here. This is a SWAT, uh, soft T wide from TACMED Solutions on the Filster flat pack. Um, that's just really in case there's any sort of massive hemorrhage up to myself or anyone else that I need to use it for. Uh, you're on the range or off that I can have quick access to that piece of gear right there. Um, it's low profile and pretty lightweight, so it's a it's a no brainer there for me, at least in my opinion. All right, buttstock. Uh, again, it's a carbine uh, carbine extension with a. a Adjustable butt stock. This is the Griffin Armament ECS or Extreme Condition Stock. It's part of their new furniture that's available uh, in black, gray, FDE, and green. Uh, it does have water drainage ports here on the rear, uh, on the sides rather, and on the rear uh, for any kind of debris or water to clear out of there, uh, provide reliable function in adverse conditions, which is a really nice feature to have. Uh, it's extremely easy to get on and off the rifle uh, as well. It's got a solid tool steel pin, uh, vice like the threaded kind of multi-dimensional pins that other uh, mil-spec stocks will have. This is a, a very, very stout system. Um, and while I worked with uh, Griffin for a while, uh, we did do a 10-foot drop test with this particular stock on a, uh, not this exact one, but this model on, a, uh, on an AR-15 and survived multiple drops from 10 feet, uh, not the same kind of uh, results you'd see with other market competitors. So it's a really nice stock. It's got this really nice reverse kind of angle, as you can see, which uh, makes it really comfortable in the shoulder pocket. And the angle does kind of lend itself to have a more stable position with the rifle mounted uh, to mitigate some sort of muzzle rise. I have this on both my rifles. Again, carbine uh, length extension, quick detach end plate. Uh, inside of here, I've got a Griffin Armament um, uh, ARSOB or um, suppressor optimized buffer. It's like a 4.6 ounce um, buffer, so it's a little heavier than H2 or H between H2 and H3 weight. Uh, and the action spring is the Spring Co. Blue or Enhanced Power Carbine Action Spring. I uh, found that kind of combo with the heavier buffer and the, and the spring to be uh, an extremely valuable piece to making the rifle run smoothly and reliably uh, over the course of its life. That kind of setup is what I run in a lot of my rifles. And uh, uh, for anyone looking to build a serious use gun uh, and looking for upgraded internals, I definitely, definitely would recommend that. Uh, moving on to the lower receiver. You see the color contrast between the upper and the lower. This lower is, a, is an older Palmetto State Armory lower. A lot of people will knock Palmetto. Uh, it was my first lower. Uh, I did my first build out of it and I had nothing but great results. Uh, dimensionally, it, it's been fantastic. Um, you know, mates up to multiple upper and lowers very, very nicely. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't hesitate going with Palmetto uh, for a base build. Filling with parts kits, uh, although there are a bunch of different random pieces in here. Most of the Plungers and springs are from CMMG. Uh, the pins are Griffin Armaments, um, dimpled AR-15 takedown and pivot pins. The trigger is a Geisley SSAE, which is their two-stage trigger, the uh, Super Semi-Automatic Enhanced Trigger. Um, I am a left-handed shooter, as some of you guys may see here in the, in the footage of me shooting. Uh, so there are a couple parts I, I do to all my guns to make them uh, left, more left hand friendly. Uh, while I was in the Marine Corps, we obviously didn't have that kind of option, so I did have to learn to, to run, run a rifle right handed. It's not that big of a deal, um, but it is nice to have the ambidextrous components, whether you're left or right, so if you ever have to switch shoulders or you are shooting on your opposite side, uh, the controls are familiar. Uh, so the ambidextrous parts I do have on the gun are a short throw safety selector, 
the Troy Ambidextrous Magazine release. Of all the Ambi Mag releases out there on the market, I've tried the Norgan, I've tried the KAC, I've tried uh, various other ones that are available, but the Troy I keep coming back to, it's a simple design. Uh, it's placed perfectly on the gun for my index finger, my shooting hand, uh, to release the magazine reliably every time. It's just a great part, uh, pretty simple design and, and easy to find, so that's the only uh, really Ambi Mag release I go with on there is the Troy, uh, Troy model. Grip is another piece of Griffin armament furniture. It's the A3 grip. It's more vertical angle than your A2. It's kind of the reason they named it the A3. It's the evolution of that A1, A2 to the A3 style grip. Uh, it's got that frag type pattern on there. No finger groove. Uh, more vertical angle. Uh, very, very comfortable. Nice and slim. Able to reach all the controls just fine. It's, it's just a great grip. Uh, affordable and a nice uh, visual upgrade in my opinion. So moving on from the lower, we're going to move up to the upper receiver. Uh, the upper receiver is just a standard 7075 forged upper. Uh, I believe it's aero precision. Don't quote me on that. I'm not exactly sure. Um, as far as, yeah, it has a mil spec forward assist with a pin in there. Uh, dust cover, obviously. And the charging handle is, again, a Griffin armament part. That's the snatch, the suppressor normalized ambidextrous configurable handle. It's an ambi charging handle. It does have a gas buster type feature. And the, uh, the handles, you can go with these large ones I have here or a smaller option if you, uh, if you need be. Again, the ambidextrous uh, character going throughout the rifle. I don't see a reason for having any sort of proprietary uh, left side ejection system that some guys have. Uh, it's, it's really a non-issue for me having shot a, plenty of, of right-handed rifles over, over time. So it's really just something I, I don't even worry about at all. Uh, the bull carrier group um, is, again, from Griffin Armament. Uh, that's a 9310 enhanced bolt carrier group with the Carpenter 158 bolt. Uh, the bolt carrier group is full billet, meaning the gas key as well is not a cast part. It is, it is machined from a billet of 9310 uh, steel. Proper heat treat, uh, Permatex uh, on the fasteners, grade 8 fasteners, and staked as per the mil spec TDP, so it's a really nice part. Um, it does have enhanced ejection, uh, excuse me, extractor spring as well as the crane O ring. Uh, for reliable extraction. I've never had an issue with this thing at all. It's just a fantastic part. Uh, moving forward, or let's go, let's go with the optic selection here on the gun. Uh, the main optic here you see is the Vortex 2.5 to 10 by 32 variable powered scope. Uh, this is a mil hash reticle uh, with 10th mil clicks, both elevation and uh, windage. Parallax down to 35 yards, uh, and it's sitting in a Spur 3016 uh, ISMS mount. Now, it's a uh, it's a fairly expensive part on the gun, and it's one of the ones I uh, uh, stressed out over for a while. wasn't sure where I wanted to go with my mount. Or did I want a QD? Uh, I heard so many great things about the Spur uh, optic mounting system. And I just wanted to just you know take the plunge and try it out. Uh, so I did, and it, it worked out really well. I, I really liked the mount. It's incredibly sturdy. It was really really easy to mount up. Has a really nice feature here in the rear is the, uh, the clear bubble level. Um, so there's no, this integrated level here in the rear that uh, you just need to open both eyes and you can see the level very easily when you're looking through the scope. Uh, it's nice and low profile here on the top so I can see my adjustments uh, for elevation when I'm dialing on range. It's, it's very easy. Um, the feature here with the spur wedge to level your scope makes it a, a, a cinch to install. And then I do have a secondary optic here a 8.T1 mounted at 90 degrees on the uh, on the correct spur mount for the left side of the gun. Now the cool thing about this, this secondary optic, is even though it's mounted at 90 degrees, uh, the center line of the optic is the same height over the bore as the scope. Uh, so simply rolling the gun inboard at 45 degrees, you'll pick up that secondary optic um, for low magnification, uh, close distance shots. I think Josh got some footage of me shooting at uh, 50 yards there with the uh, with the red dot device the uh, scope on 10 power so you guys will see the difference there moving forward from that um, the rail here is a 13.5 inch rail again from Griffin Armament uh, you'll see that theme going out uh, throughout this gun I really like the parts they're coming out with uh, nothing but respect for what those guys do at their, at their business they, they make a great product and they really have some uh, some some cool stuff coming down the pipe so definitely uh, keep a lookout for that the rail is the low pro rigid again from Griffin Armament this is the M lock rail so you have M lock at 3 6 and 9 o'clock with a full Picatinny rail on top. A uh, nice low profile mounting system with integrated QD cups. So if you wanted your uh, sling to mount close in uh, to the center of the receiver, you got two steel QD cups on either side of the rail um, to do that. On uh, the top of the rail is does have threaded holes, quarter 20, uh, for any sort of accessories that are low profile mounted. Uh, most, the one they had in mind when they did this was the uh, Wilcox Raptor, which is a, a multi-use IR, 
designator, rangefinder, uh, and illuminator, uh, mostly used by special, special operations forces, but you guys will see that occasionally on some civilian guns. Uh, low pro QD sling mounts from impact weapon components. That's an extra part I had laying around. So I can do my sling on the uh, on the ends of the rifle here from the buttstock to the uh, to the end of the rail. Um, that was just something I clipped right on there. You'll notice there's no backup iron sights on here. Um, I don't really see the need on a, on a weapon like this having a primary and a secondary optic, even though they both are electric. Uh, really, I, I'm not anticipating uh, deploying with this gun anytime soon. And even even if that were the case, you know, you could argue all day whether or not to have backup iron sights on the gun. I just didn't want them on there. Uh, it gives it a cleaner look. Not really a necessary part for the gun. And again, I got already two two sights on there. I don't need a tertiary sighting system. It's not really going to be that kind of situation. Uh, bipod Harris, uh, six to nine inch notched adjustable swivel bipod on a Connect Development Group Connect mount. This is a quick detach M-lock type uh, bipod stud, which I picked up from Copper Custom and Valparaiso. Um, it's a really interesting thing. I didn't. I was just kind of messing around with it, and I realized the application I could use for this gun, and it makes the bipod very easy to, to don and doff uh, from the rail uh, quite easily. And it doesn't take it. You don't have to add any extra Picatinny rails. You don't have to add any extra bipod studs. It could connect to the bipod uh, full time, and then makes your bipod a QD type function, which is great for M. At the end of the barrel here, we do have the, the muzzle device, which is a Griffin Armament Taper Mount Hammer Comp. This is a silencer mount uh, for their Taper Mount series. I have a. Griffin Armament Recce 5, uh, it's a 223 taper mount can, it's a really, really awesome silencer, quick to go on, precise, reliable, um, and just a great uh, addition to any kind of gun like this. Uh, silencers are legal, and I definitely uh, encourage everyone to take advantage of that and pick up uh, their favorite can for their, for their guns. It's hearing protection uh, for your gun instead of your ears, so it's just a great option. And the final, the feature piece of this gun. Uh, is the, the barrel. The barrel is a uh, Criterion 1 and 8 twist 223 wild chambered barrel. It's a 16 inch mid length uh, and it's in their hybrid profile. Uh, so it's like that medium, it's like that medium weight kind of taper uh, in between your, your lightweight and your, and your heavy barrel. Uh, really nice balance of weight, rigidity, uh, accuracy potential, and that lighter weight that people are looking for. Uh, mid length is the way to go for anything over. Uh, Pretty much over 14 and a half inches. I mean, any any barrel that's not a short barrel rifle that you're doing with an AR-15, you should have a mid-length gas system on there. Uh, a lot of people think you know chrome line barrels aren't accurate at all, but obviously Josh will show uh, uh, some pictures of the groups we put down on on paper with this this particular gun. Uh, put down some just over half minute groups uh, consistently with this this particular gun right here, shooting 77 grain ammo from prime ammunition. Uh, it's great, great ammo, great combo with the barrel and the gun. Makes it a uh, lightweight, uh, reliable, uh, reliably accurate gun um, that gives me the confidence to, to do anything I need to do, from training to uh, hunting to whatever, uh, from you know zero yards out to 700 plus yards. I'm, I'm comfortable with this gun uh, to be able to accomplish that. So that's really uh, this is my all-around go-to setup. You know, I'm, I'm looking at maybe changing up the optic uh, sometime down the road, maybe to to a one to six, not that the two and a half to 10 is too much, um, but I do want to save a little bit of weight, a little bit of size, and uh, I think there could be a possibility of having a little more of, of a versatility with a slightly lower powered optic, but you know, you never know. I'm just gonna keep playing around with that and we'll see, uh, see where it goes. But that's my gun. If you guys have any questions about this specifically that you wanna ask me, I will be around in the comments section. I'm assuming he's gonna post this to YouTube. And I'll, I'll be around there to answer any questions you guys have uh, regarding this gun or your own setups, uh, point you in the right direction, whatever. I've got a lot of experience kind of messing around with different components, and I'd be happy to share some knowledge and uh, hear what you guys think. So thanks a lot.